let's get physical. It's Jordan here, back in with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the fourth week of March, 21st until the 25th, Monday to Friday. Remember, once we get to 100,000 subscribers, we're giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED model to one of you, so come on, subscribe. This episode is sponsored by Sakurako. Sakurako is a monthly Japanese subscription box full of 19 authentic, traditional Japanese snacks from Japan's local artisan snack makers. Each month you get a box packed with fascinating treats, each of which is explained in a lovely booklet with the box, so idiots such as myself can feel a bit more cultured. Biscuits, cake, tea, of which March's theme is afternoon tea. You even get a nice little cup along with it. Experience authentic Japanese tea time at your home by clicking the link in the description and use the code on the screen switch to get $5 off your first Sakurako order. If you need to see more, then between the main part of this episode and the community spotlight each week, I'm going to be taking a dive into this box and showing off all the goodies, so stay tuned. Room Factory 5 is releasing this week, finally! It's been a really long wait for this one. Firstly, it was announced way early, and then the, you know, the Japanese release happened, and finally, Finally, we have the Western English version. I do enjoy Room Factory games. Room Factory 3 was one of my favorite DS games, and Room Factory 4 is pretty awesome too. And while we don't know the full quality of this one, it's got a lot to live up to in my opinion. Mixing action RPG with farming and adventure, I think it's going to be a popular release. But what I want to know is, where are the goddamn factories? I've been promised goddamn hardcore industrialization, and I want it. They keep tricking me! And don't forget there is a standard edition as well as a collector's edition which comes with a soundtrack sample and Steenbock. And our executive producers Elisa, Jcross7776 and Alexander Kato have chosen this as their pick of the week. Grow! Song of the Evertree is developed by the same dudes who made Yonder. I'm keeping my fingers crossed this runs better on the Switch than that game, but it's promising since that is a lovely game, technical issues aside. Anyways, this is a game where you explore a unique world at your own pace, finding the animals and flowers that inhabit it. It's been compared to something like Animal Crossing, which is cool, but it does like the interactivity with NPCs apparently. So, it looks like it could be a really nice game if it runs well. Fingers crossed. Grand Mountain Adventure should be releasing in North America this week. It was supposed to have its European release a few weeks back, but I don't know if that actually came to fruition or not. We all know Microids are a little bit constipated with their releases. In fact, I'm pretty sure Microids is a medical term because I've got a case of it. They want to push, but sometimes it just, it just won't come out. Stranded Deep is a survival game where you are stranded on an island. I don't know where the deep is coming from. The island doesn't look that deep. Maybe it just means you're like deep in shit. I don't know. Because you're battling man-eating squids and Jaws' little brother. You're in a bit of duty. Interestingly, this has been in early access on the PC since 2015. So I don't know if this is going to be like the full version. Maybe. That would be cool. Have you played this on the PC before? Let me know your thoughts and how much will it cripple the Nintendo Switch? We all know these survival games don't tend to run very well on the system. A quick mention to Ever Forward, which is probably releasing in Europe this week. This puzzle adventure game has been out in North America for quite a long time already, so I don't need to talk about it too much. Jigglypuff is starring in their very own game releasing this week. I don't know why a Jigglypuff game is called Kirby and the Forgotten Land. I thought, you know, they put Pokemon in the title somewhere. Anyways, this pink puff ball is going around in 3D for the first time. And no, that racing game or that 2.5D game don't count. So yeah, I mean, this looks about as 3D as like Super Mario 3D Land, which, you know, not proper open world, but, you know, to give it that little bit of fresh air, a bit of freedom, a bit of room to wiggle, or as in the case of Kirby, I mean, Jigglypuff, Waddle. This looks so damn charming that I wish Nintendo actually liked us enough to provide review codes early rather than later than everyone else. I guess we are a lower class of content creators. They just don't get the funnies. I guess they don't want us taking the piss out of Jigglypuff, even though we're, you know, we're always well informed and do our research. Goddamn Jigglypuff. So yeah, I'm sure this is going to be a wonderful time, and I hope it does well enough for Nintendo to make this the proper way the Kirby series will go forward. I do like the side-scrolling stuff, but, you know, they just seem like too much of a walk in the park at times. Fingers crossed it doesn't... suck. If you're a reviewer, and you use that pun in your review, you don't deserve the goddamn review code. You should give it to us, even if you're using it sarcastically, like me. But I was the first to do it, so it doesn't matter. 
Don't support the pun nonsense. And our executive producers Jonathan Rumor, Thorn Metal Luna, Grant Sert, Issa, Robotech, God of Resin, V, Government, Fat Cat, and Raven Knight have chosen this as their pick of the week. Tandem A Tale of Shadows is a puzzle platformer rather positively received. It has a really unique look to it, a mix of art deco and fantasy with a little bit of everything else thrown in for good measure. This mixes top-down and side-scrolling gameplay as a girl and a bear work together to solve the mystery of the plot. Looks like it could be a decent one. It reminds me of other games on the Switch like uh, Another Sight and Iris Fall maybe. So yeah, our executive producer, Brent McLean, he likes the look of it. It's his pick of the week. Dodgeball Academia is a sports RPG where dodgeball isn't just a pastime, it's a way of life. Here you explore the world with the main story and side quests and then take part in chaotic dodgeball matches with a hint of RPG about it. I'm not sure in real life dodgeball you can turn the ball into a, like a fireball and incinerate your enemies, but I would watch it. Dodgeball fans, let me know, can you electrocute your opponents? But yeah, expect a fantasy twist on the sport. I've heard it can get a little bit repetitive after a while, but it's considered a very good game nonetheless. And our executive producer, Dane Wilkinson, has chosen this as his pick of the week. Are you ready? It's that time of the week again. It's been a while. It is Code in a Box Bullshit! Legend of Mana, an incredible action RPG from Square Enix that got a proper physical release in Asia. Final Fantasy IX, an incredible RPG from Square Enix that got a proper physical release in Asia. World of Final Fantasy Maxima, an incredible RPG from Square Enix that got a proper physical release in Asia. Buy these, don't buy bullshit. Unless you're a farmer, you might as well just take a dinosaur dump in your wallet. And that concludes this week's Code in a Box Bullshit. Let's get on with it. The Low Prince, Flynn, Son of Crimson, is an indie action platformer that was rather positively received. It was originally a Kickstarter campaign, although I think some people were a bit miffed that some of the promises in that campaign weren't reflected in the final product. Nevertheless, this is a great looking game with nice, chunky pixel art characters. I like it. This is being released by Super Rare Games on Thursday with just 4,000 units available. Are you ready? It's that time of the week again. No, it's not code in the box bullshit. It is... Bafflement of the week. Provided to you once again by the company that never fails to deliver a year late. Strictly Limited Games Wonder Boy Returns Remix. Uh, yes, two weeks after they put up the pre-order for Wonder Boy Anniversary Collection, they've already balked it by showing that they didn't include one of the games in the series. It's like, uh... Oh shit, we forgot to put it in the collection. Hmm. Oh well, pay full price for it. Funny how it actually is probably the worst game of the lot of them, so you can buy it separately. I mean, the remix is much better than the original, but it's still not a compelling modern game. Anyways, this is available in a standard edition and a collector's edition if you want the collection reject. Demon Turf is up for pre-order at Limited Run Games. This is a 3D platformer that may not be generous to say, but it kind of looks like a... Bubsy 3D, at least it reminds me of that. Only visually, of course. It's supposed to be a rather sweet game made by the same developer as Slime Sam. Only thing that bothers me, or may not bother me, but just highlights why I find low print releases often more hype than necessary, is the fact that this has a retail release on Xbox. Yes, the Xbox has a retail release, but the Switch, huh, the Switch needs a low print release. It makes absolutely zero sense unless it's all about the money, which, you know, of course it is. And our executive producer, Cartoon Soren, has chosen this as his pick of the week. Postal Redux is up for pre-order right now. This is an infamous game, originally released in 1997, known for its darkly theme of a delusional mass shooter. It's an isometric game with a grimy style to it. It includes the main game and its add-ons, even stuff that was originally exclusive to a Japanese version. This just absolutely bleeds 90s edginess. I mean, I'm sure it was cool for the time, but mass murder for the sake of mass murder. Just give me some anime babes. Gal Gun is starting to look like a pretty nice prospect for me. I mean, yeah, you're shooting schoolgirls, but you're shooting them with something else. Ugh. You can get this from Limited Run Games. 
Alphadia Genesis 1 and 2 is a double pack of budget RPGs from good old Chemco. Yes, this is hardly the Grandia collection, I think we can all agree. I've never played these two before, so I, I will hold judgement, but yeah, they're budget RPGs, you know, made for phones. But they probably have some charm to them if you've exhausted all the other JRPGs on the Switch. You can pre-order this at Limited Run Games on the 22nd. And our executive producer Parsnip Coffee has chosen this as her pick of the week. Alright, the imports. Remember guys, if anything takes your fancy and you'd like to import it for yourself, then consider using the links below in the description and the pinned comment. If you use those links, then it also helps support this series ever so much. You guys are wonderful, and I constantly thank you from the bottom of my heart, really ever so much. Plus, in return for using our links, you can get a very nice 5% off any physical item from PlayAsia if you use our coupon code GETPHYSICAL for 5% off. Get physical. it's all one word, and this will probably change, I I think maybe at the end of next week, I'm not sure. But yeah, for now, it's get physical. And the lilies. I forgot to bring this up last week when I talked about its limited run distribution effort, but it is getting a Japanese release this week with English. And there's a collector's edition as well. So it's actually a decent option. You'll probably get it much earlier than limited run. Although, to be fair, sometimes they can be pretty quick with distribution these days, especially if they hijack retail releases like they did with Crisis. <clears throat> what? Uh, I don't know. It's certainly an option, but, you know, I'd prefer Japanese myself. That's just me. Links are below if you fancy this version. Also in Japan, we have a mother load of visual novels that don't have English, plus one very late release over there of Ori, the first game. Or is it the second game? I don't know, but it's not in the double pack. I don't know why. Now, just a little update on a fantastic new import announcement coming in April. We have been blessed with yet another Square JRPG, Saga Scarlet Grace Ambitions, is releasing in Asian regions with English, baby. Yeah, yet another game in the well of Saga series. I'm well up for this. I put off buying it digitally so many times and my patience has finally paid off. This is a definitive version of a Vita game where there's a non-linearity about it, just like the rest of the Saga series. Take on the quest, how you like and with whom. And the decisions you make can affect the story. I think I'm going to have to put this on the next It's a Bit Late review poll. I can't wait. Pre-order links are below. This is going to be a fine addition to your JRPG collection. Alright, before we get into the community spotlight, we've got one last look at Sakurako. It's the last week of the Sakura Co's March Box and we've only got a few more things to get through. Three more tasty snacks for you to drool at. These last ones may be small, but like myself, they are still incredibly desirable. <coughs> Let's start with the Gion no Sato Matcha Cookies. I'm not even going to fight and call them biscuits because they're little stick thingies. They're stick thingies. When it comes to snacks that are shaped like a straw, there's only one thing that I could possibly do to test them, and that is to test them like a straw. Ah, uh, okay. It kind of doesn't work. Never mind. They're really yummy, making love in my tummy. Aji Shirabe Ume Sande. Well, I've eaten these kind of things quite often here in China. They're really common in supermarkets and stuff, but I tell you what. This is the best one I've ever tasted in my life. And they have a really nice tangy plum flavor going on and the texture feels like actually fresh unlike the ones I've eaten previously. Definitely the best one I've ever had. The taste is really nice. And my daughter, well, I had to fight at least one from her. And finally, we are ending with the peach jelly. Now, there's only one person on the Switch Watch team who's actually qualified enough to tackle this one. Of course, my dear Erin. Yes, I'm tagging her in and she devoured this in about 12 seconds. She especially enjoyed the sweet peach slice embalmed within. I wish I could have tried this myself, but it's, it's in her belly right now. And that's it for March's box. If you want to order this from Sakura Co, then please, please use the link in the description as that can help supporters very, very much. Plus, you can use the code on the screen, switch to get $5 off your first Sakura Co. order. Uh, firstly, me, well, I told you a couple of weeks back that Red Ark Games sent me a nice package. Well, today I've got another one of the games to show off, possibly one of their more obscure releases recently, Sir Lovelot. Now, I know what you're thinking, this sounds like a medieval spin-off of Leisure Suit Larry. Well, you're wrong. This is a platform about a man trying to find his true love, just like all of us are. Just don't tell my wife. 
It's actually a fairly cute game with a nice bit of challenge. Once you get into the flow, it can be really good. It may be a bit on the short side from beginning to end, just a few hours, but if you want 100% it, then it has quite a lot to offer. Simple, but nice pixel art. I think it will be a decent addition to anyone's collection. You can get this from redartgames.com and you can get 10% off with SWatch10. That's not an affiliate, we don't earn a dime. All right, on to Eula. Anibal sent in this rather nicely composed photo. Gotta love symmetry. I suppose the second Monster Boy CE is for me? Yeah? Right? Huh. The executive producer Cartoon Sorin sent in this photo of two recent Play Asia exclusives, two very good visual novels from the same studio, both of which are very different as well. Check out my review of Love Esquire for more info on that one. Executive producer Elisa showed off her full collection of the English Atelier games. Just amazing at how many there are on the Switch. Lovely games. Elundra, thanks for using our links and code on Dust Diver 2. I hope you enjoy that. They also got in a double helping of Nino Kuni. I do wonder if they'll do another game in the series. I know there's a mobile game, but I mean like a, a proper one. Executive producer, God of Resin sent in this photo. Thanks for using our links to purchase them. That Japanese Fatal Frame, it just looks amazing. I just wish English was on the cartridge rather than a download. Kiel sent in this photo of the recent European release of Death's Gambit Afterlife that comes with a nice little art book. Mika sent in this photo of some fantastic releases. Root Film, another visual novel that's not really seen a whole lot in this series. Not very popular, but still a supposedly decent visual novel. Peter Clark picked up Triangle Strategy, the Asian version, which does have English. I really need to pick this one up. I know a lot of people complain about having so much story, but I say bring it on. Robin Hatherall sent in Giraffe and Annika, which definitely not seen a lot. The game itself has charm, but not a whole lot of quality. It's one of NIS America's more obscure titles on the Switch, I would say. Very different from their usual game. Executive producer Robotech sent in this photo of a big bunch of games. Thanks for using our links to purchase them. I would like to try out Monster Crown at some point. I heard it has its issues, but I do like a good retro-style Pokemon game. Executive producer Thorn Metal Luna sent in this photo of the Big Daddy Cruel King, which comes with a cute little plushie. Plus, I noticed that it has their new logo on it, which, despite the majority of people, I think is way better than the old one. Simple, yeah, but it, it suits them much more. I also thought the last one looked a bit, you know, tacky. Totally Simon, thanks for using our links to pick up some of these. Olympia Soiree, a really good Otomi apparently, but of all the ones available on the system physically, it's the one I see the least of. Maybe it's just not so easy to get a hold of, I don't know. Executive producer Vei sending this photo picking up the Japanese version of Gal Gun Double Piece. I don't actually know what it includes or if it's different from the Western edition though. Zora Gaiman sent in this triple helping of Japanese cotton. I just find it remarkable that she's had such a revival. I mean, I'm guessing none of these broke the bank to make them, but it is lovely to see her, physically as well. I'm hoping Japan gets a double pack of 100% and Panorama, rather than the separate releases Streetly Limited are doing in Europe. Executive producer Issa sent in this photo showing off some nice games, rather magically to see Beholder there. Anything, anything that has Bad Land Games' name on it is just, it's just a miracle. Literally, the most uncommunicative publisher in history, I would say. Well, maybe second to Dispatch Games. All right, guys, let's have a quick roundup. I've uh, had to work all weekend. That's why I look and sound rough as hell. I'm tired, so let's get through this. Michelle Catani. The One. Choco Loco James. Pabs. Needless Dragon. Ashura G. Craid. Radiant Rancid. Rovest. Chump Dancer. Marty Ma. Theo. Invasorzim. Garzilla. All right, please send me pictures on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or tag me in a post and use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. We have an email address, switchwatchspotlight, gmail.com, and we have a Discord, which we you know we can have a little chat with you guys, and you can send your pictures there in the submissions section once I open that section up. I always forget. People have to remind me on, like, Thursdays. Jordan, come on, open it. 
Um, yeah, okay. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching this episode of Let's Get Physical. Special thanks to executive producers, as always, Dean Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brett McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, J. Crod, 7776, Elisa Punky Dusta, Michael Del Polito, Cartoon Soren, Robotech Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Government, Fat Cat, Isa, the Mental Traveler, and Grant Sir. Thank you for your support. Plus you, yeah, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, give me uh, something Kirby related or J Jigglypuff. I mean Jigglypuff related. Yes. Please check out some of our other stuff. See you guys over there. Have a good one. I'm going to go to sleep. Have a rest. Yes. Yes.